interesting is it wasn't fully conscious when we started this process. Is we actually used a form of dot yeah. <laughs> to come up with the cards that we chose. So we ended up going through the cards that all of them and identified a group of cards that we thought applied and then used dots to identify which ones we thought were the highest <laughs> of the cards. So, um, and it's somewhat influenced by the way that, you know, this is a process that I use a lot and it's influenced by the way that I use it partly, <laughs> the, 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 the type of cards that were chosen. So, you know, the priority focus is obviously one of the reasons you know, why, why we do this, but it's also a way of generating possibilities. So the process starts by doing a unrefined brainstorming quite often, where everything is possible, so you end up having this you know, everything possible. Um, there's a playfulness aspect, which for me is a really key part of this. I quite often will use the dot voting as a way to shake up the energy a bit. And as you can see, you know, the kinds of dots that I use have happy faces, I've got stars, you know, and that sort of thing. So it's a way, after you've generated the list, the, the group then gets up, moves around, they've got dots on their hands, they start talking to each other about, you know, why did you uh, pick that particular item? So it's a, a, the process gets, gets looser in that stage. But it's also, there's an agreement, the power of constraints is that at the end of the process that there will only be a certain number of things that are chosen. So, or one particular item chosen. And so one of the cards that we moved away that we didn't all pick, but maybe still applies, I'm thinking, is letting go. Mm -hmm. Ends up being mm -hmm. the part mm -hmm. of, the, of the process here. But it is very much an, an opening process here, divergence, um, you know, following the energy. And then we saw it as then a narrowing process, as people are using their dots to uh, distill and this card to me has a similar uh, aspect of letting go, is trusting the wisdom of the group mm -hmm. so that at the end you've harvested, you have a particular result that has uh, sort of flown through this process of um, starting with a, uh, a large number of possibilities to something that you're willing then to take to the next next level or you know, a final decision if that's what you've used the dot voting for. Very cool. Yeah, love it. Thank you. And again, when would you use it and when would you not use it? Mm -hmm. um, I would tend to, to, to not use it in a situation where you hadn't had enough opportunity to have the conversations at the beginning here. Um, you know, Dave actually brought up a, an interesting point too where those conversations are, are important to make sure that people don't uh, choose what is the easiest or the uh, le least risky, mm -hmm. but that they've actually allowed uh, enough, have enough information to be able to make choices that they really believe are in the best interest of themselves and the group. Um, and so that's an important piece here. I'm not sure that I would use this I, I use it a lot, actually. So you know, um, so that would be one of the things that that uh, is an important starting point. So if there isn't enough information, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't use it. Or enough time. Um, it doesn't take it, a lot fast. of time. It can actually get yeah, through yeah. something pretty yeah. pretty darn okay. quick in this. Yeah. It, it actually is a way yeah. of okay. shortening. Okay. The, the yeah decision making. So it's a it's, 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 it's convergence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it is. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. use and it when the need is prioritized. Divergence you can use it. convergence rhythm is one of the yeah. cards. Yeah. When there's a list of things to prioritize, that's when you use it. If that's yeah. not the situation, then don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So sorry. How did you say you come up with the list to begin with? Is it is it, a, is well, it that's brainstorming or is it? Well, that's there? that's <laughs> one of the ways uh, of doing it. You know, for example, I use this for naming the community ends up being mm -hmm. the way that I've named every group mm -hmm. and it, it ends up being then it's just strictly a voting where 
you may not have done a brainstorm. You may have gone through quite a process to narrow down to you know three or four or five names, but then uh, use this process to identify the final name where the majority wins. You know, or you know, use it for color. But sometimes it is a pure brainstorm where there's unlimited possibilities of things, and then to narrow down the things that you are. Uh, that you really want to focus on. So there's a quite a number of times that the dot voting can be used to, to really narrow possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's really a narrowing. Mm -hmm. You might have a um, too many things in the works in in, in your community, in, like at our co-housing community, that need to get onto the agenda, and as a way to not have the facilitator choose what goes mm -hmm. on the agenda. It's a way for the community yeah. energy yeah. to be identified as to what is important to, to prioritize that gets onto the agenda. Yeah, I quite often so, use this in what conversations want to happen first, yeah. mm -hmm. for example. I, I've also seen this method used without the dots, but essentially exactly like this, by venture capitalists to assess the alternative projects that are available to them. Yeah, just three comments, actually. I, I really find, for me, this is a great way of understanding the hearts. This, because it's a, a dot, I call it dot democracy because it helps people to know this is a very democratic way of doing it. We're not saying yes or no, whatever. But it's really nice way of, because I'm so familiar with dot democracy, it's really nice way of using the cards. The other, and understanding and really embracing the cards. The other thing that I find that when I'm doing this, when you're getting to this point here, to the harvesting, I, the way I usually set it up is, try before you start putting your dots up, try to think of that this is going, these things are going to be implemented. So see where you feel comfortable with, make sure, have that vision of an action plan. Because if you're going to choose something that cannot be implemented, or because it looks wonderful or it looks pretty, then you might find that you don't have the end product you really want. And I find that really sort of helps you, oh, I better stop thinking again. So that's a distilling. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it frames, I find, especially for boards, I find it frames them because especially if you, I find board, some people on the boards are not very um, experienced in board, man, um, being on a board. It just helps them to do it. And it's really good. I really like that. It's great. I love it. I'm going to move us along. Yeah. I think, I think